gas and welding supply. We're here today at our open house in Jackson, and uh, we have a special guest, Bradley Lilema from Lincoln Electric. Um, we're here today to talk about the 210MP. Uh, he brought a little demo unit for us to try and demo with all the customers that come in today. So I'll introduce Brad, and uh, we're going to ask him some questions. So, Brad, one of the biggest questions is what is uh, you know, what options can you get with this machine? What comes with this machine? So this is uh, one of the most versatile welding machines that's on the market today. It's something that's been very, very popular. Okay. Uh, you can add, this machine will actually do in any process that's out there. Yeah. It will MIG weld, it will stick weld, you can TIG weld with it. Really? And it will also flux core. DC TIG? Uh, DC TIG, DC yep, TIG scratch TIG. start. So okay. it's kind of modified, but that's one of the UX options. Uh, one of the accessories that could be added to that and you know just expand the capabilities of the machine. Okay, okay. now can I get a spool gun kit? In you can, machine? yep. Okay. There's an optional spool gun kit that you can add and that would uh, require just a minor installation to get it all hooked up and connected. And, uh, but yeah, for basic aluminum, you know, just hobby type welding, it really works very, very well. Okay, perfect, perfect. I know that the market that we try to angle is all home hobbyists, mm -hmm. um, maybe light fabrication, or race car guys, off-road guys, that kind of thing. We've, we've noticed a lot of those guys buying them. Um, and just some of the questions about reliability. Have you had any issues as far as that goes? And no, no, this, like I said, this has been a very popular machine. Um, and I think the hobby welders uh, tend to really migrate towards it because it's so versatile. So whether you're talking farmers, you know, this machine will run on either 115 or 230 input power. So in a shop scenario, you plug it right in the wall, in the wall and you have plenty of power. Uh, but if in a farmer scenario you need to take it out in the field and hook it up and do a you know a remote repair somewhere, uh, the 115 works excellent as well. Run it on the generator or something yeah, like that. Exactly. Turn it on. That's cool. That's really cool. It's also uh, an inverter, so it's very lightweight, very portable. Okay. Um, and again, you can stick weld, make weld, or, or uh, flex cord and stick weld. Off. Okay. And for all the stick welding guys out there, I know we've been. Does it does it strike 6010 well? Strike an arc with 6010 well, or how is the yeah, so 6010 is one of the electrodes that we don't recommend for it. So it runs 7018 very well. You can do all your 6011, 6013s, any of those other maintenance and fab type rods, repair rods. Um, but 6010 is because it's a pretty demanding electrode. Yeah. We actually don't recommend it for this particular okay. machine. Okay, just curious. I, I, we had some questions. We had some people say they did run it and ran okay, so they can. One, yeah, they can, <laughs> but will it do a well problem? Yeah, exactly. Well, Let's turn the machine on and uh, maybe walk through some of the versatile settings on the front of the Sure. All right, Brad, let's turn this machine on. And um, you can see on the front of the machine, power button, LCD screen. It's firing up. You hear the fan kick on. So, Brad, maybe you can explain to me what some of these settings are, the red, the green, and some of the dials. So I kind of back up, when you boot this thing up, it starts you on a home screen here and you can see it's very intuitive and you go through and you would just tell the machine basically what you want to do. So there's uh, a MIG setting and this C25 afterwards stands for the type of gas, which in this case would be 7525. There's a CO2 setting for MIG, there's a standard MIG, there's a flux port setting, there's your spool gun option. Stick welding, TIG, and then there's a back settings uh, that you can go into and adjust some of the other uh, capabilities on the machine. So today we are running 7525 shielded gas, and so we would just select that. It then just verifies on the power plug that you are connected to the machine, which you accept. You tell it what diameter wire you're running, and then it gives you a material thickness range to go with it. So in this case, if you were welding eighth inch material, roughly, select 10 gauge. Okay. And then what that does, it doesn't really control anything on the machine, but it sets these ranges up here. And so for someone that's new to welding, they might not know how to set voltage or wire feed speed. And you can see from the green to the red, that this gives you a normal operating range for that thickness of material. Okay. okay. Making things pretty simple. Just a recommended up. settings for it. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's pretty user friendly. I, I like that. Um, let's turn on the gas and we'll uh, give it a shot. Okay. Cool. All right, let's uh, tear into this machine, open up the door, and see what the inside looks like. So, as you can see, you got your spool holder, 
your wire drive roll system, your tensioner right here. So this is your feed plate. This is the spare one that it comes with. The wire feeds through there. This kit comes with 025, 030, and 035 drive rolls. You can get as an option 045 drive rolls. And then up in this, this button up here in the left hand corner, it has a switch between big gun or spool gun. Sometimes commonly asked questions is why when I hook up my spool gun does it does it not work? But well, you gotta flip the switch down. Um, pretty basic setup. I mean, you just feed the wire through, you drive roll it in your tension pulley. Pretty easy. And then they have a nice weld chart up top. Gives you suggested parameters just in case you want to like, run outside or do some adjustments, that kind of thing. Gives you a parts list breakdown with all the part numbers. So when you go to reorder or you call your baker's gas rep and say, hey, I need, you know, KP2529-1, we know what you're talking about. You know what you're seeing, you know what you're talking about. It gives you a part picture breakdown. Gives you a description of what each knob does. And it's actually a very nice chart, very easy to read. Let's try and uh, do some welding with it. So breaking down into your MIG gun, um, we'll look at the nozzle. There's your nozzle, it comes right off. Pictures are tips, thread into a diffuser. So when you have these parts in a kit, you change them out, you want to change wire size, you want to go to 035 from 025, you would change the contact tip and uh, that would be it. You just have to do that. Now if you have to change these out, a little wrench to take the diffuser off and everything goes right together pretty easily. A couple of turns, it's on there, and you're ready to weld. Pretty simple. All right, we're gonna fire up this MIG welder, strike an arc with it, see how it welds. But before we do, I wanna throw out a promo code to you guys. It's a Viking. And with that Viking promo code, you get a free pair of roll cage Lincoln Electric rigging gloves. Um, real nice, real heavy duty, nice leather, good grip. They got the knuckle protectors on the back. Pretty cool. Hey, for free, that ain't bad at all. But let's strike an arc and see how the problem runs. Chris Tart. I was running that new Viking helmet, the 3350-4C. Man, the clarity on it was unbelievable. Awesome. It's, uh, it's a nice hood. Yeah. Thanks for watching my video. Uh, tune into our channel on YouTube, Major's Gas. And also, I would like to thank our special guest, Bradley, for showing up, running us down through this machine, checking it out. Awesome machine. And if I were to make another video on the Square Wave 200, what would you guys want me to do about it? Or what questions do you have for me? That's the next one on my list. We'll go from there. Thanks again for watching.